It's the How to Write Funny Podcast. I'm Scott Dickers. So doing something a little different this time, I'm not interviewing anyone during this episode. I'm just going to talk about some fundamentals in comedy, three basic comedy fundamentals that oftentimes people breaking into comedy ask me about and they want me to give them some quick tips or some ways to get started. But also people who are really experienced at comedy, I think can always benefit from remembering the fundamentals. So let's get into these three comedy writing fundamentals. I believe the key to mastery is repetition of the fundamentals. It's just easy to forget. Once you get in a groove and you're doing stuff and maybe you're making money, maybe you're doing fine. It's that's when you slip. That's when you start to forget what got you there and you forgot some of the basic habits or the basic practices that will keep you fired like a rocket powered engine that you want to be. So if you're Michael Jordan and you're starting out, you're a college basketball player, you're doing hundreds of free throws a day. That's what he does. That's how he gets good at making shots. After he's like a multi champion VIP best basketball player in the world, he's still doing hundreds of free throws every day because he's got great coaches and they know mastering the fundamentals is how you become a master of the craft. Okay, so the first one is you have to be writing a lot of jokes. It doesn't matter if you're a stand up uh, prose writer or if you do jokes for a late night talk show or if you're just aspiring. Everybody needs to write a lot of jokes every day. Now, if you're a professional, you're already writing jokes as part of your job. If you imagine or you dream of getting out of that job and doing your own thing at some point, it's important to write your own jokes for your own thing. Segment the jokes you write for your job and do those for the job, but make sure you're investing some time in your own jokes so that when you move on, you're going to have this bank of material that is only yours and only for you. So I recommend people write 10 jokes every day. 10 jokes, one-liners, ideas for bits, concepts that could be spun into TV shows or book ideas or movie log lines or whatever, but 10 short, funny ideas. They can be observations. They can be fully formed jokes. They can just be subtext with like an idea for how maybe it can become a joke one day, but there should be 10 and this should be an intentional effort every day. Now I'm going to get to an even more fundamental thing in a moment. And that is how do you muster the creative energy or the motivation to come up with these jokes? If that's your issue, going to get to that in a second. Right now, just focusing on coming up with the jokes. I think it's really important to hit that number, hit 10. So however you need to do that, if you do it first thing in the morning, spend 20, 30 minutes. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spending 20 to 30 minutes tops, not pouring over each joke to make it perfect, but just getting the list down. Do it in the morning, get it over with. That feels great. For the rest of the day, you're feeling productive, almost no matter what you do. Now, if you don't have that kind of time, if you get up by an alarm and you race out the door, there are pockets of time throughout the day that you can do 10 ideas. What's your commute like? Can you dictate a couple of ideas into your phone? Can you jot them in a notebook while you're sitting on a train or a subway? And then throughout the day, if you have five or 10 minutes where you're standing in line somewhere or just not doing anything or mindlessly watching some YouTube video, like turn off the video and spend those five minutes writing a couple, three jokes. That's such a valuable investment of your time. And then reward yourself after you do it by watching a YouTube video, if you have time. Uh, make it a discipline so that you always get the jokes out and you do the work first and the play after. And then later in the day, you've got another commute. Maybe you do another couple of ideas. Maybe you do the dishes after you eat. That's another three to four minutes. You can think about jokes and you can pause to write them down or record them in your phone. And so by the end of the day, you've got 10 jokes and it took you no extra time. And it's going to make you feel really productive. And then the last way is obviously write 10 at night, right before you go to bed. Just pour out 10 jokes. A lot of people like to work 
that way. I prefer the morning method. If I'm crazy busy, I'll do the throughout the day method. But some people like to sit there and do it right before they go to bed. I don't like this because it kind of fires up my brain, gets me all energized, gets some adrenaline pumping, and then it's harder to go to sleep. But, you know, for some people that works. And that's great. Make sure you spend the time, carve out that little 20 to 30 minutes, pour out those 10 ideas, you're good. Now, if you can write 10 ideas every day, at the end of the week, you're going to have 70 ideas. And that's a lot. That's great. And for any of you who know my work, you know that I believe that the key to quality is quantity. So the more jokes you have, the better those jokes are going to be. Now, you could go through that list and you could find probably five or ten jokes out of those 70 that are going to be pretty good and workable. And you can move them onto a short list and finesse them, make them into stand-up bits, make them into concepts that you're going to work into tweets or jokes, whatever you're working on. On the other hand, if you poured all your time and focus into only writing five to ten jokes and making them perfect... And this, unfortunately, is what most people do. They don't write the 70 jokes quickly for quantity. They'll focus on 5 to 10 or worse, less. They'll focus on 1. They'll pour all their energy into perfecting that, and it never works. The Theodore Sturgeon principle always applies. 90% of anything you create is going to be garbage. So you have to create that garbage, and you have to get comfortable with producing garbage in order to come up with that 10% that's going to be okay. And then maybe there's 10% of that 10% that's great. So you got to do the quantity. And so coming up with 70 ideas a week is going to get you there. Now talk about per month. Okay, so now you have 300 ideas. That is some serious, serious coin in your bank. And after a year... How many do you have? You have 3,650 jokes. That's unbelievable. You're going to be unstoppable. You're going to have so many ideas to work with. And that's fundamental. So that's saving. That's like you get your first job, you get your first paycheck, you put 10% of that paycheck away into savings and you don't touch it. And if you do that from the time you're 18 or 19, you get your first job, by the time you're 59 and a half or whatever, you're going to be a millionaire because that money is going to compound. The jokes will do the same thing. Those jokes are opportunities that are going to compound. They're going to build your voice. They're going to build your unique comedy brand, whatever that is. And they're going to build a career for you if you do something with them. That's not in the scope of this little podcast. We're just talking about the fundamentals here. So Come up with your jokes. I'm going to issue a little challenge soon on my Facebook group, the private Facebook group for How to Write Funny, which I encourage you to check out and join. It's How to Write Funny on Facebook, just facebook.com backslash How to Write Funny. And I'm going to issue this challenge, and there's probably going to be a contest inside of that challenge for who can come up with the most ideas in a certain time. I think that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. So that's fundamental number one, come up with a lot of jokes. Now let's get to what I mentioned earlier about how to motivate yourself to come up with jokes. A lot of people don't know how to do that. They sit and they look at a blank piece of paper and they're just not sure where to go, how to do it. I got a simple solution for you and it's a one sheet. It's free on the howtowritefunny.com website. It's super easy. It's at howtowritefunny.com slash joke. That's howtowritefunny.com slash joke. No hyphens. Now, some people may feel like they have a deeper problem. They just can't motivate themselves to write. They can't think of what to write. Fundamental number two is how to write those jokes. How to break through all of the psychological barriers that you have, even if you don't know you have them, that are preventing you from producing work. So let's talk about writer's block. 
Writer's block is a thing that people say they have. I don't personally believe in it because I believe there are really easy solutions for it. And I'm going to give you the solutions for it right here on this podcast. But I do want to talk about it for a second because it really is a torturous psychological problem. And I've had that problem. I once was assigned a script for a TV special on NBC, an hour-long special, and I had to write it. Now, at that time, I was the editor-in-chief of The Onion, so I was spending all my time editing. I was looking at people's work, and I was giving feedback. Maybe I'd punch up a thing or two here and there, but I wasn't generating any raw material. I wasn't writing much at all. So for many, many months, maybe even a year or two, I had not really written anything. I had only looked at things and judged things and critiqued things. Now, as I'm going to get into in a moment, this was a recipe for disaster. This put me put my brain in a position of almost being incapable of generating raw material successfully. And to be a comedy writer, you have to be able to generate material and it has to just flow out of you unstoppably and continue to so you can generate those 10 ideas a day so you can improvise so you can talk off the cuff if you're doing crowd work when doing stand up your brain just has to be one of these brains that produces a lot of material and you can get there it's easy it's like turning a switch and i'll tell you how i did it so i knew about this exercise the morning pages when i had to write that tv script but i didn't do it this is my problem and we all have our issues this is mine i know the solutions to things but sometimes I self-sabotage and I just don't do them because I figure, ah, I don't need that. I can power through. But sometimes like, it just doesn't work. You just can't. You need to fall back and do the steps of the solution that you know needs to happen and put it into practice. So I spent the whole day after I got that assignment staring at my blank computer screen. Didn't write a word. Worthless, worthless day. Total writer's block. Second day, it was the same thing. I maybe tinkered on it a little bit, wrote something, then deleted it, but just a wasted, wasted day. And after this happened for a third day, like I knew pretty soon my agent was going to be calling me saying, hey, where's that script? They want to see a draft. I can't, I can't tell them I got nothing. So I was like, okay, I can't fake my way through this. I have to go back to the fundamentals and I have to do the morning pages exercise because I knew the power of this exercise. This is an exercise where you write for 30 minutes every day, ideally first thing in the morning, though it doesn't really matter. Morning time works great for me. And you don't care what you write, and you don't stop writing. You just move your fingers, and you type, and you write for 30 minutes. Doesn't matter, don't judge it, don't correct typos, doesn't even matter what you're writing about. doesn't have to be funny. doesn't have to be anything. You just have to write for 30 minutes. So the point of this exercise is to wear down your editor brain. Because when you're blocked, when you have writer's block, you have an imbalance in your brain. Your brain imbalance is you're too heavily weighted to the editor side of your brain. The other side of your brain, the clown side, is atrophied. And it's completely suffocated by the editor side. And the clown side of the brain is the brain that's going to spew forth all these crazy ideas that are inside you, that are bottled up. We all have them. We've just suppressed them. So anybody who has writer's block is literally sitting on a volcano of amazing comedy ideas. They're just stuffing them down and they're pre preventing them from getting out. The editor side of the brain is where perfectionism lives, where nothing is good enough, nothing is perfect, nothing works. You judge everything you do and you say, you know, that's not very funny or that, that's not good or whatever. And if you have an editor brain that's oversized, that's snuffing out anything coming out of your clown brain, you're never going to produce anything because nothing is ever going to be good enough. You're going to be editing your ideas and cutting them before you ever put them on the page. And if any of them ever do squeak out and get on the page, you're going to delete them. So you need to develop the clown side of your brain. And the morning pages exercise is how you do that. 
It's basically opening the floodgates, letting that clown brain stuff pour out, and you're going to hate it. You're going to hate a lot of it. And you're going to type things like, oh, this sucks. This is terrible. I'm no good. I'm not funny. That's fine. Get it out. The point is, write it down, but don't judge it. A lot of people ask, well, what does a morning pages exercise look like? So I'm going to read one of mine to you. I'm just going to grab a random one from way back. I don't remember this at all, but I'm just going to read a little bit of it so you can see generally what these look like. Ideally, you don't show these to a soul. You write your morning pages exercise and you can save it if you want just for fun. Or if you think maybe you generated a good idea or two in there somewhere, you can save it to sift through later. I kind of like to archive everything, so I save that stuff. And so I, I can pull out an old one. I can just show you what it looks like, just so you have an idea. Okay, here's a morning page I wrote from like 10 years ago. So I have no idea what this says. And I can barely read it because there are so many typos. So many words are just like bundles of letters that don't make any sense. It's important that you don't go back and correct typos when you're doing a morning pages exercise. You plow ahead. You just keep typing. Because again, nobody's ever going to read it. You're probably never going to read it. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you wrote for 30 minutes. That's all that matters. So here's what it says. Okay, here we go. Someone arguing about $25. Somebody who really cares about money. What is our relationship with money? What is money? Why is it so important to us? The status? It doesn't actually allow us to get what we want in life. What do we want in life? Closeness, meaning, fun. None of those things are bought by money. We think they are. We think if we buy the $2 million boat that we're buying fun, but fun can be had in a cornfield for fun. That was funny when I was a kid and my dad reminded me of this after I was playing in a cornfield. And he said, you see, sometimes things in life don't cost any money at all. Then I had to make up a lie about how I had lost a quarter while playing in the cornfield. What about a bunch of kids? Okay, that's what I got. That's the start. And I just riff and I just go off stream of consciousness into whatever. And sometimes interesting new things come up. Sometimes an idea that might actually be workable in my comedy comes up. And that's just a bonus. It's not the point. The point is to write for 30 minutes. Now you can start by writing... I have nothing to say. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. That's fine, but move past that. Keep riffing and talking about other things. Spin old stories, whatever you want to do. And you just heard what I wrote. Like, it is dumb and it is stupid. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's not the point. It's all about producing writing and not judging it. So once you have this 30 minutes of writing behind you, you may not see any immediate benefit the first day depends on your brain and just how blocked you are. I did this on the fourth day, writing my TV pilot, and it helped me. It, it loosened my faucets a little bit, and I was able to write like a page or two on the script. The next day, I did the morning pages again, and I wrote a couple more pages. And then the third day I did the morning pages, the floodgates had opened. Now my brain was unlocked, and I wrote all day on that script, and I must have produced like 12, 13 pages in a day. So it only took me like a couple, three days to write the whole script, because it was an hour-long script. So, again, it may take you a different amount of time. I've seen it take a week, at maximum maybe two weeks, of doing the morning pages every day to unlock the clown side of your brain so you can produce raw material without judgment. In order to do comedy, you have to produce raw material, and you have to be able to produce it without judgment. And then look at it later. Go through it and ask yourself, does this work? Is it funny? Maybe show it to a feedback group or whatever. But you need the raw material. So this is a discipline exercise. This is an exercise that you force yourself to do even if you don't feel like doing it. And I know that's hard. It's one of the hardest things about being alive, doing something we know is good for us, even though we don't want to. If you're stuck and you don't know how to motivate yourself to even sit down to do this morning pages exercise, or if you're not blocked because you feel like your editor brain is too powerful and your clown brain is atrophied, but 
you feel like you have writer's block because you're not motivated, because you just don't feel the need or desire to produce anything, that's a separate issue. And I've got a solution for that. I wrote a blog article about that. It's called How to Get Motivated. It's on the blog at howtowritefunny.com. I think it's like the first or second article, if you scroll down. And check that out, because there are some simple, simple little tips there to hack your brain and get to the point where you actually are motivated to write. Because it's all basically a pain and pleasure thing. You don't want to write because it's painful. It might be painful because you don't feel like it, but it also might be painful for deeper reasons. Like you, you're afraid of failing. You're, you're afraid of succeeding. You're afraid of how that will change you. You're afraid that what you write won't be perfect. So the Morning Pages addresses all those things and allows you to start producing work without judgment. But if you need a more powerful force to motivate you to write and get over some of those psychological barriers, the fear of your writing not being liked by someone or the fear of hurting someone's feelings or the fear of changing, whether you're going to be a different person if you are producing a whole bunch of ideas or you get somewhat successful doing comedy. Those are prices that you're going to have to pay and you're going to have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Do I want to pay this price? Do I want to make this sacrifice in order to get successful doing comedy, in order to be the person I want to be in comedy? And maybe you've asked yourself that question and you've subconsciously answered it and decided, no, the pain is too great. I'm just going to stay where I am because I don't want to rock the boat and I don't want to produce something that someone isn't going to like, or I don't want to succeed and change, or I don't want to fall flat on my face. I don't want to bomb or whatever. But I'd like you to make that choice intentionally. I'd like you to decide whether you're going to succeed or fail based on the facts at hand and really look at one versus the other. What is your life going to be like if you're a voluminous comedy creator and maybe you're actually making some money with your comedy versus what's going to happen if you keep living your life right now? So coming up with a little system for that and a way to trigger your brain to force you to do the things that you know are good for you is what's in that blog article on how to get motivated. So I encourage you to check that out. Now, the morning pages is just one exercise that I recommend for overcoming writer's block, and it is incredibly powerful. And I believe anyone who does it is going to experience the floodgates opening, and they're going to achieve this quality that all professional writers that I know possess, which is they can't stop writing comedy. They would do it even if nobody was paying them. In fact, before they ever got professional, that's what they were. They were just people who produced a lot of comedy because it welled up inside of them uncontrollably. And this exercise, if you do it regularly, can get you to that point, which again, I consider that to be kind of the bare minimum fundamental for being a professional comedy writer. Now you can look up online probably how to conquer writer's block. And they're not going to give you the morning pages exercise. They're going to give you a lot of really terrible ideas that don't work. Like get up and move around and go for a walk. That just delays the writing. That just procrastinates. The other thing people would recommend is eliminate distractions. Like clear off your desk. Use a word processing program that takes over your whole screen so you're not looking at anything. That's all really just... I mean, if it works for you, great. But... For me, that just means I'm spending time clearing off my desk. So how is that helping me? And if there are other things on my desktop besides the word processing program, like stuff in the background or whatever, I can look at that and maybe it spurs a little idea while I'm doing my morning pages. So stimulation doesn't bother me. It actually helps me. If I'm alone in my own brain, I feel like that's so much more barren. I want some kind of input, maybe music I'm listening to, maybe background sounds. This is why a lot of people like to work in cafes, because you get all this cacophony and sights and sounds around you that you can actually absorb and filter out into whatever you're working on. They'll also recommend that you go somewhere else, like change your environment. That's nonsense. Like your environment doesn't matter. You should be able to write wherever you are. And if you're one of those comedy writers who 
can't help but write, it doesn't matter where you are. You're going to write where you write. You're going to write on the subway. You're going to write on the bus. You're going to write in your head while you're showering, while you're biking, while you're walking. You're going to come up with jokes in your day-to-day life. And that leads to my second tip for overcoming writer's block and to be able to produce jokes prolifically. And that is to carry a notebook with you. And even when you don't have dedicated time or you're trying to think up jokes, you're going to have little ideas occur to you. A funny observation. You might notice something funny. Might happen in real life. Might be something somebody says. Might be just something that goes off inside your brain. You need to capture that. Like that is priceless raw material that you need to capture. So have a little notebook. It can be a little paper notebook that you can get at the drugstore, or it can be the notebook app on your phone. It doesn't matter. But write down those little things that happen. You'll find if you keep your mind open and you observe what goes on around you, that'll happen five to 10 times a day. So you may not even have to sit down and force 10 ideas out. They might just come to you. The trick is capturing them. Most of them are completely ephemeral. They go through our brain and we're like, oh, that's kind of amusing. And then they go out and they're lost forever, which is tragic. That might have been a great idea for a comic novel that you could have made a million dollars on an option to Hollywood. Like that's the fulcrum that we're talking about here. So don't let those ideas get away. Now, after every week, if you've done the morning pages and you've done the notebook and you've tried to write 10 ideas a day, you're going to be sitting on a pile of content. You're going to feel so prolific. You're not going to know what hit you. You're not even going to know what to do with all that stuff, which is a great problem to have. So those are our first two fundamentals. Write prolifically, write 10 jokes a day. And number two, break through the psychological barriers to writing and write prolifically. And don't get writer's block. When you're a professional writer, you can't afford writer's block because you have to produce. So it's silly. We need to get rid of it. Now, on to the third fundamental, and that is avoid cliches. Now, this is basic, and if you do any kind of work in comedy, you probably know all about this, and you know that in order to produce work that's professional, that excites people and gets people more interested in your comedic voice, whatever it is, if you work for yourself or you work for a show or whatever, they want to see original humor within that voice. They don't want to see the same old jokes recycled and filtered through that voice. And amateur humor writers, on the other hand, they're going to use cliches because, number one, they may not understand what the cliches are because they may not be that attuned to the comedy world and what jokes have come before them. Or, worse, they may realize the power of cliches because the thing about cliches is before they're overused and kind of everybody knows you shouldn't use them anymore there's a period where they work and they work great so people who write blogs and people who make trailers for movies know this all too well and they're going to use cliches like awkward or and that's a thing that happened or, I'll show myself out. Or, that's what she said. Or, whatever the cliche may be. So, these are going to get laughs. They're going to get big laughs. Audiences love them. But, you have to avoid them. As soon as you realize that a joke has been told before, or a funny line or phrase has been used before, or just a funny topic has been joked about too much before, you've got to retire it. This is the one thing that makes the difference between an amateur comedy writer and a professional comedy writer. So for an amateur, you have to be aware of what jokes are being told. You have to watch a lot of comedy, stand-up, movies, TV shows, YouTube videos, read a lot of comedy online, etc. And just be aware of what the cliches are so you can avoid them. If you're a professional, the risk is... You don't want to use those cliches at work because they're probably going to work. Like on a lot of the big late night talk shows, they're still getting away with some pretty cliched jokes in monologues like Trump has small hands or 
making jokes about white people and things that white people do, uh, or the difference between black people and white people, that sort of stuff. That's going to be red meat to the crowd. But there are some kind of laughs that are the wrong kind of laughs. So people are going to laugh at that stuff, but that's the vast unwashed. That's like the rabble is laughing at that stuff. The sophisticates and the comedy nerds and the critics, the people who are going to write reviews of TV comedy shows, they know those are cliches. And they know that that host went for the easy laugh. And they're gonna, it's going to be a knock against you. So you have to be super careful about that. And always remember, if you can create an original joke, an original phrase that no one has ever used before, and incorporate that in your jokes, it's going to delight the rabble just the same, because they just want a funny joke. They don't care that it's been used before. But it's also going to delight the tastemakers and the elites and the people who are going to write and talk about your work and spread the word about your work. So this is what I mean when I talk about the accessibility of your humor. Yes, there are some easy jokes you can tell as a comedy writer, and you may think these are easy wins, but you're cutting off a really important part of your audience. You need to appeal to all the dumb people and all the smart people. So to help you out with this, in case you don't know what the cliches are, and you don't have time to like watch all the comedy there is, I put together a document, it's called the Big Ass Cliché List. And I'm going to keep adding to this. Right now it's got 151 clichés in it that are in popular use. And you need to get this document and you need to check it, read it, and make sure you're not saying any of this stuff in your work. You can say it in your daily life. Like I use a lot of those jokes in my daily life all the time. Like I still say the internet's. Uh, and the webs or the tubes or whatever, because I just think that's funny. And I'll never get tired of it. But in my work, in my professional work, I would never use those terms because they've been cliches for years and people are still using them in professional writing to try to get laughs. And it's a big mistake. As soon as somebody sees that in a piece of writing or in a stand up bit or even like, in an impromptu or improv type interview or any sort of like live situation, they're going to know, oh, that person is not an original thinker. That person is not a creative thinker. So use them all you want day to day. They're fun. It's no problem. But in a professional context, these are 151 jokes that you must never tell again. And I'm going to keep adding to it, like I said, as more cliches come on board. But to get your list, to get your big-ass cliché list, go to howtowritefunny.com backslash list. That's it. Howtowritefunny.com backslash list. And check back periodically and see if that number has increased. The number's right there on the cover. 151 jokes you should never tell again. And whenever it's updated, I'll probably update it every time it hits a factor of 50. So the next one I'll put out will be 200. And we're collecting these jokes on the Facebook group. That's facebook.com backslash how to write funny. If you want to join, it'd be great to have you there. And you can throw out some cliches that you found that are not on the list. So there we are. Three fundamentals for you to recap. Number one, write jokes, write jokes every day. Number two, defeat writer's block. Don't let those psychological blocks inhibit you. And number three, avoid cliches. Just doing those three fundamental things, no matter what level you're at in the comedy business, you're going to be poised for great success. That's it for today's episode. If you like this podcast, leave a nice review on iTunes. I'll talk to you next time.